Hello out there, wherever you are. As for me, it's time for another installment in the films, you know, in our filming location series. Uh, we just recently did the I Am Not Okay With This filming locations. That was a show that debuted only a few days ago. And now on a rainy March, I am here to cover a movie that came out in 2008. Um, that is, of course, uh, the filming locations for Zack and Miri Make a Porno. Now, if the title doesn't tell you, this movie is a hard R, directed by Kevin Smith, uh, with Seth Rogen and Elizabeth Banks, uh, filmed, you know, unabashedly Pittsburgh, uh, from them wearing Pittsburgh Penguins jerseys to reference to Ben Roethlisberger and a lot of other Pittsburgh references in that movie. Um, but they filmed it in a... a Basically, the main scenes uh, were filmed in the Monroeville area, which is about eight miles outside of downtown Pittsburgh. And the only, I'd only seen one other YouTube video that covered the filming locations for Zach and Mary, and they covered the school where they had the reunion in their apartment, which is not in Monroeville. So what we're going to check out is the Monroeville filming locations for Zach and Mary make a porno. Now, those three scenes um, are actually all from pretty much the opening of the movie like you see all these three places in the almost the opening credits of the film and so we are going to explore those real quickly one by one um just to check them out and see what they look like today because this movie came out 2008 that's 12 years ago now uh it's making me feel old but uh yeah we're gonna check out the filming locations for zach and miri make a porno let's go we are here at location number one. This is Ralph's Army Surplus, a short but memorable scene on a busy stretch of Route 22. Um, what happened is, is that Zach, played by Seth Rogen, gets a hand warmer caught in his pants, and they actually pull off here on the way to Monrovia Mall, which is actually in the wrong direction, but they pull into here. You can see as it turns, like it's like slightly cut off, and he feverishly digs down his pants to get a... Uh, hand warmer out i can imagine because this is a busy stretch of road the people coming by and seeing seth rogan dig down his pants to pull out a hand sanitizer on multiple takes i'm sure um but yeah that happened right here and the main stretch of Monroeville. it's the, like the car comes up and pulls in and it pulls in right into this area Yeah, so a very short scene, but a very uh, memorable scene. One of my favorites from that movie. Um, but yeah, if you want to check it out, it's right on uh, Route 22, Minerovo. Heading up to location number two. Of course, this wasn't the first movie filmed in Monroeville Mall, but that's another video for another time. Now, the opening shot from Zack and Mary was actually filmed right here, uh, right outside this entrance for the Monroeville Mall. And the reason why I know that is because it was being filmed in 2007 or so. I was briefly out of work. I had a friend that worked at, work at Brookstone, and he said, hey, come up, they're filming the new Kevin Smith movie up here. So I put on my movies clerk's t-shirt and i came walking up here in the mall to see what they were filming and they were right here they had uh that dusty old blue car that they had here and you know there's a lot of trailers a lot of people milling around i did see kevin smith from off in a distance um but yeah apparently this was the first day of shooting and it occurred right here I'm walking through this entrance of the mall. Actually, interestingly enough, like right where this bench was, when they were, uh, I kind of stood here with a lot of other people that were working on the film. And in this door walked Craig Robinson, who 
he'd only briefly been on the office so i didn't really know who he who he was as of yet and then seth rogan came walking in who i knew from undeclared knocked up a couple other things he had done prior to uh this movie coming out so i was able to shake his hand and then i walked down the corridor away here and scott Mosier, the executive producer from uh one of kevin smith's longtime executive producer was here talking with elizabeth banks and so, you know, I kind of let that go. I walked down this other direction and uh, actually met Elizabeth Banks right over there. Now this was to understand that this was pre-selfie days, pre-cell phone camera days. I think I was toting around a Blackberry Pearl at the time. So unfortunately I do not have a picture of meeting Seth Rogen and meeting Elizabeth Banks just was able to meet them, shake their hand and appreciated the work that they had done you know, Elizabeth Banks from the 40 year old virgin and she was in Scrubs um, Seth Rogen of course um, but yeah, unfortunately did not get to get a picture with them, hindsight is 2020. had I known I would absolutely have that picture today but unfortunately not so while I got to meet Seth Rogen and Elizabeth Banks, um, I didn't actually get to meet Kevin Smith that day. And I, I really wanted to meet him just to thank him for, you know, all the movies and all the entertainment he's given him. But he was directing a movie at the time. Um, they did have a premiere for Zach and Mary at the Oaks Theater, um, which I went to where he was live in person. I unfortunately just was able to miss an, I just missed an opportunity to meet him then, unfortunately. Um, but it was really cool to see him in person. A few years after that, he was on tour for a podcast. It was the Jay and Silent Bob Get Old podcast that was at the Carnegie Library of Homestead. Uh, I was able to see that. Oh, great, very cool time seeing him live again, a natural entertainer. Um, but unfortunately, I was trying to meet the man to thank him for all the years of entertainment and did not get to then either. A few years after that, I was able to meet Jason Mewes at Steel City Con, uh, and it was really cool to meet him, um, but it's like meeting Tango without cash, Beavis without butthead. When you want to meet Jay and Silent Bob, you want to meet Jay and Silent Bob as the collective, the set, the group. So when I found out they were coming back to the Oaks to show the Jay and Silent Bob reboot, I decided I couldn't be denied. Of course, it sold out immediately, and I feverishly looked online looking for tickets. And mission accomplished. Um, it's actually interesting. He uh, he did not reach out for a handshake. He reached out for a hug. And he's probably the only man I've ever hugged outside of a member of my family. Uh, I felt like a kid that got drafted to the NFL and I was meeting the commissioner. Um, but it was really cool to meet him um, after you know a long time following his comedy. To thank him for all the laughs he provided me. Not just with the, the live tours but the movies as well. And to reminisce about that day, watching him film day one of Zack and Miri. So it kind of came full circle. It was really cool. Um, but yeah, that is location number two. It was right out here. Dropped Miri off at work at the Minerva Mall. On to location number three. All right, we are here at the third and final location. Location number three. Actually, arguably the main location for the entire movie. Which is, of course, the Bean and Gone Coffee Shop, which is now a DQ grilling show. Um, this was actually, like, when I had come to um, first... I remember I drove past this. I was going to, like, GameStop and picking up a reserved game. And I was like, they really put in another coffee place? Like, you know how many coffee places there are in Monroeville? But no. No, it's actually... It was not a coffee place. It was just for the movie. And it was empty for a long time before the Dairy Queen that was across the street came in and moved in. But there's a shot from the movie where, like, you can see, like, the car comes down. It hits this. It actually follows the car around. Like, around here. Past these buildings. It almost skids out by this nail salon. And then comes up and like zooms back in right to that sign, which is the meaning of. Now it's weird because this Dairy Queen 
gives no distinction. And I repeat, no distinction that this was the main filming location for Zack and me remake of porno. Why would they not want to be affiliated with a, a classic film like that? It could have something to do with them serving food and what they did in that establishment, but that's another conversation for another time. I mean, they could have hit it, kind of like what, um, when Zack and Miri became a DVD release, where they just called it Zack and Miri, and not Zack and Miri make a porno. They could have hit it. They could have a little Zack and Miri thing. It was filmed here, with like a Seth Rogen picture, and Elizabeth Banks picture. They didn't have to get into the grisly detail of what, what that was all entailed inside that building. Um, obviously it was a movie after all. It wasn't an actual porno, as far as I know. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'll do it. Three locations up, three locations down. All from the actual, like, opening credits of the film. Zack and Miri Make a Porno were filmed right in the Monroeville area. Uh, thanks for watching. If you, uh, stumbled upon this, uh, checking out filming locations. I have some other filming location videos you might want to check out. Uh, if... Uh, you, you know, a regular watcher. Thanks for watching as always. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, I, you know, uh, as mentioned previously, uh, I have a Patreon link in the description below. Um, should that be something interesting you, you like the channel, you want to donate a few bucks, you can do that. I also have a Spreadshirt shop. Um, if you definitely, you know, want to pick up a t-shirt, uh, I'm going to actually get some t-shirts in to, to model off at some point. Um, but you can check out that. Um, but thanks for watching. For Zach and Miri filming locations, my name is Tom and I was here. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Bye guys.